minimum wage. Governors assure labor of better package, saying we remain dedicated to the process and assure that better wages will result. Governors to continue engaging with stakeholders to reach a mutually agreeable solution. Anything above 62,000 Naira will create crisis, NECA boss wants. And uh, we see on the Daily Sun newspaper, uh, it has its same minimum wage. Labor rejects Tinubu's position, describes Preston's pronouncement to consult with stakeholders as unfortunate, silent on next step. Governors meet over wage others uh, well uh, f finally governors seem to be picking up on the issue of uh, minimum wage uh, dr lazarus we'd like to hear from you what's your take on the minimum wage especially from the angle of labor um silent on the next step right thank you very much uh the minimum wage debates in my view has lasted for too long uh, there are some issues that should be taken more seriously and more urgently and i think minimum wage is one of such for obvious reasons yes uh, labor made their stand government uh, made their stand it takes discussion negotiation consultations uh, to arrive at acceptable uh, amounts on this but i sincerely feel that we are wasting a lot of time uh, because there are many ways to do this from when the administration came, even before this administration. Uh, you know, there is what is called a cost of living adjustment. You know, every year, every quarter, uh, CBM meets, they review situations, they adjust uh, interest rates, they make certain adjustments. You know, organizations also meet, look at their projections for the year, look at realities, make necessary adjustments. Uh, even in the private sector, on annual basis, there is a certain percentage of uh, increase that uh, people might get, you know, based on inflation, based on other economic considerations. And I do think that uh, minimum wage should also, you know, be getting that, or even general welfare of the working class should be getting that kind of treatment. It does not, in my view, make more sense that with the level of inflation and over 40% food inflation, high unemployment rate, and skyrocketing of everything, it's not realistic that we we'll keep on, the, uh, you know, on these debates as long as we've done. So it should be treated with the urgency it deserves. And if the government wants to do that, they will definitely do that. Now, now Dr. Lars, talking about realistic has been the debate about what figure is most realistic. Now, and it's also from the angle of state governors, most of whom are enjoying increased federal allocations by lamenting that they cannot use the entire bulk sum to cater for their wage bill in their respective states. Some state governors say they cannot do better than 52,000 Naira. Organized labor is demanding 250,000 Naira. The federal government is also looking at 62,000 Naira. In those brackets and in line with the current economic realities, what's the most realistic amount in your opinion? Well, that, that, that's an interesting question. You know, uh, most realistic is somewhat uh, relative. What could, might be most realistic to uh, Sokoto might not be most realistic to Lagos. You know, so uh, all states are not equal in terms of the economic indices and variation of factors. Also, apart from government, the private sector that is also expected, you know, to, to you know, prepare their wage in accordance with the minimum wage are also dealing with a lot of issues. So I might not say this is what is most realistic, but, you know, as, as a citizen, as someone that I've been observing, uh, following the discussion i do think that you know uh, nobody should earn below 100,000 naira you know as, as the case may be you know in this country it's, it's not that uh, so much but also the economists uh, will do analysis on okay what's the impact whatever amounts how will it affect inflation rates uh, you can pay a million naira if you so choose if you have the money but you know that there is also an amount you pay and uh, it might raise inflation and even the worth and the value of the of the naira the money will not be able to purchase much 
So all that has to really be worked out. Uh, in those states, for instance, is paying seventy thousand naira. You know, so if they could pay that, you know, why not? And while we the, the states always say, oh, we don't have money to pay. And in December, we begin to read about huge sums of money, you know, that have been looted, that have been mismanaged, that have been wasted, you know, monies are being spent on white elephant projects. Loans are being taken to build airports where they are least needed, you know, to build things that may not add directly uh, to the economy. I think we need to produce more. But a, a part of the challenge is... Uh, uh, just say, oh, allocation, allocation. For how long? Nigeria, about two out of three persons in Nigeria is, is, is young, probably below the age of 40. So that's a highly energetic and productive population. But a lot of our young people are idle. We need to get our young people busy. You know, Nigeria can produce more than it's currently producing. Everything should not be about what we are making from petroleum, what we are making from solid minerals, which most times are not even accounted for to not even get into the economy. Nigerians are hardworking people. They, are, they can be made productive. We can generate more money. You know, uh, in countries that we admire, people are not idle. Everybody get busy. Even students have student jobs. And everybody is doing something that is adding to the economy. It's high time our governors, local government chairmen, uh, you know, looked at getting young people productive, not listing uh, 10,000 people as special assistants or technical and be giving them handouts. No, let people get engaged, get training skills, get productive. Let monies be invested in, in creating an environment that will be good for business. Let's make our private sector more productive by providing things they need to produce for the economy, not always consuming and spending on things that do not contribute to the economy. I think that's the attitude that needs to change. Governments have all the resources to, to create an environment that could make business. And when I say government, it's not just the federal government. We have 36 states. In every state, how many industries have they uh, you know, attracted? How are the small businesses doing? to what extent are they being supported, monies that are being voted to support farmers, is it getting to them, how secure are you know, the farms, producing enough to even feed ourselves. If you don't and Dr. Pay, Lars, let's also take into consideration the challenges with transportation. According to data from the National Bureau of Statistics, MBS, a 0.86% increase in the cost of intercity travel has been recorded as of April, the survey says that an average of 987 naira was the cost of intercity travel using buses between cities. Now, the challenge was also on the promise to take away some of the burdens of the post-subsidy regime as it concerns transport courts with the provision of CNG buses. It, it, that project has not really birthed the intended purpose, and most of Labour's yearnings are also on this demand's to bring down the cost of transportation just within even cities, not even within states. Uh, absolutely, I, I, I agree with Labour on that. You know, and that, that was the point I, I I was trying to make. If you do not want to pay out a lot of money to get into people's accounts, that's fine. Look at what they are spending the money on, and also tend to make it easier. If you, if you pay 200,000 naira, for instance, as minimum wage and the cost of translation increases, cost of school fees, cost of food and everything goes up, the 200 naira may as, uh, thousand, may as well become worthless. So I agree with uh, Labour that mass transit system should be taken seriously. Uh, last year, the, the government here made that commitment when, uh, you know, they declared a subsidy is gone and say the CNG buses and all of that. We should take it most and not just at the federal level, not just in Abuja, at every level. You know, people must move, whether they are moving goods or services, whether they are going to work, you know. And if every city in Nigeria have a conducive transport system, particularly in Abuja, it's really unfortunate and, and shameful, I must say, that in 2024, uh, we still do not have standard 
mass transit system in a city as big and beautiful uh, as Abuja. You know, and the issues around uh, robbery, criminality, the so-called one chance is, you know, dealing a whole lot. I know people, you know, people I know personally who've been victims, many of them in the past one year. So these are part of the issues. Whichever way gets, if it's government that will do it or getting uh, private partners, it should be done like yesterday. We shouldn't be discussing this over and over you know, for months while uh, we keep having uh, victims. So there should be those mass transit. Anywhere you want to go in the city center, you have you park your car and have a conducive uh, mass transit system, whether you're moving from Buari to go to work at the Federal Secretariat, you're moving from Kujé, anywhere, you know, you'll be able to get conducive bus. And uh, for civil servants, perhaps they might have a card you know, for students, for elderly people, you know, for youth core members, there are these categories of persons who might have a card that, you know, could be cheaper, you know, uh, for instance, uh, where I'm currently, I'm, there's a, a kind of program I'm doing, I have a, a, a card that is like 50% cheaper, you know, student card to, to buy a public bus. So I scan the card, it charges me much less than it will charge like, uh, you know, uh, a full-time worker. So these things could be worked out. That way, you know that if you're going from Kubwa to Federal Secretariat to work, or from Gariki to uh, Kwali uh, to work, you know, because you're a worker, you are paying, the, you know, relatively less, because perhaps your wage is not that much to pay the full rate, or for persons with disability and other categories of persons. You know, these are holistically things that could be looked at. Uh, where people work uh, is the food af affordable, you know, like in federal sector, they have the food courts, perhaps relatively uh, uh, affordable to a number of them. So what are the things people are spending on? Schools, if you have a family with four kids and all of that, and they are all attending schools, how good is our public schools? Now people are being forced uh, to, you know, utilize schools that are more expensive because uh, they can't get the same quality of education uh, from the public schools. But that may uh, the public schools have, you know, might be better, but that's not the standard for the, the rest of the country. You know, whether you are in Zara, whether you are in Osho, Bayelsa, Eponi, or uh, Sokoto, you should be able to attend public school that your child will learn good enough to be able to use a computer uh, to be able to learn basic things to compete in, in the 20, 21st century economy. These are things that we should also invest in, invest in, in schools, so that the pressure of having to uh, take that child, of course, no matter how good public schools are, people will still go to public schools, people will still go to private schools, all of them are good, and all of them have their target. You know, so, but it should be a choice that, okay, yeah, I want my child to go to a private school, perhaps because I have extra money to pay, to because the environment is much more beautiful, automated, digitalized, and all of that, you know. So, but not because I feel that oh, going to government secondary school, Gariki, uh, will make the child learn less compared to someone that perhaps attended uh, the last uh, in terms of the quality of knowledge that has been imparted. So, this is an area that should also be looked at. What about healthcare? Health insurance, healthcare expenditure is one thing that also takes a lot from our resources. So if people don't have to bother about choosing between eating and healthcare, which also influences health behavior, health insurance, uh, National Health Insurance Authority Act, Session 14, made health insurance mandatory for all residents of Nigeria. So how many percent of, or how many of us are currently insured? Perhaps now, we'll get to health insurance. It does also make one of the lead stories on one of the dailies this morning. But first off, let's also look at comments coming in from the Minister of Information and National Orientation, al Haji Mohammed Idris, which is captured on one of the feature stories by the Premium Times. Now, the infographics would greet a screen shortly, uh, taking quotable comments from the minister under the subtopic national minimum wage. Mm -hmm. He says, and I quote, Mr. President is going to consult further so that he can 
have an informed position because the new minimum wage, as I said, is not just an issue of the federal government. Unquote. This are comments from the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Al Haji Mohammed Idris. Now, whilst the federal government might pay its workers better, uh, many have also pointed to the increased borrowing, owing to reports from the Debt Management Office DMO, that in the last three months our debt profile has received an additional 2.43 trillion naira in terms of borrowing. Now, there's also increased federal allocation. Can these sums be better channeled in states to improve the welfare of? civil servants within states i know you talked about the disparity in some states not being equal but we're seeing improved inflow of income to the states and increased borrowing how do we share it amongst its federating units yes uh, the, the the increased borrowing is uh, concerning uh, not because we are borrowing we've been borrowing for, for a very long time but uh, essentially because of what we're using the resources on Yes, we may argue that uh, there is increased uh, increased allocation and increased revenue. The amount, yes, it might be financial increase, but is it economic increase? Uh, what's the purchasing power of uh, you know the money? If it used to be five billion before and it's now ten billion, and what ten billion can buy now is far less than what it could buy in 2022. Uh, I wouldn't really consider that uh, as an increase. It might be increased in terms of numbers, but it not increase in terms of the value of what that could purchase. Uh, but ha having said that, uh, yes, consultation is necessary, all of that is necessary, but for how long? Let this be get done with. Uh, you recall that just before the first year anniversary, within a week or two, you know, we, we had a national anthem. And, you know, there was a legislation that brought back national anthem. You know, uh, in the regular way of making laws in the country, you have first reading, second reading, you have public hearing, where the opinion of Nigerians are called upon, people will go and add their views before you have third reading, uh, passage and assent. But, uh, you know, uh, public hearing was ignored and uh, people's input was not even there and uh, it, within two weeks it, it was the amendment was done and it became law with this uh, speed of light i must say it took 10 years for the national health act to become law in nigeria uh, due to legislative uh, bureaucracies and all of that it took 13 years for the violence against persons prohibition act uh, to become law you know but it took less than two weeks for that to be done. It shows if the government means to do something, it can happen very fast. You know, I'm, I just use that as an example. So I think this conversation around minimum wage should be treated with that level of urgency. You know, all these processes, they are fine, consultations, meetings, engagements, and all of that. But should, it doesn't have to take uh, forever to happen. Uh, for a uh, strike upon strike, disruptions in the economy and all of that. You know, we, we really don't need that. The more strikes you have, the more it also hurts the economy. Uh, it reduces uh, revenue, it uh, introduces instability, and sometimes there may also even be uh, security concerns, you know, which will all be avoided. So I really want to appeal to all the stakeholders, particularly uh, the government at the state, national levels, and all the, those who are involved in this, to quickly get done with this and let's move to the next step. And as for the borrowing, um, <laughs> a, a, a lot of persons just borrow, but what are we spending it on? Like I said earlier, production. We should look at whatever amount we are using, especially borrowed money on, what is it producing? If people borrow for business. People borrow. It's, for example, uh, I, I can choose to borrow to establish a business. Uh, if I've done my feasibility studies and I feel that okay, uh, this business will most likely succeed. I did my risk assessment, make my mitigation plans, and okay, I could generate this money in five years. Uh, I could pay back my debt over time, and the business will stabilize and keep giving me revenue, keep giving me money. That's fine. But if I borrow for a party, you know, just borrow and invite people to come and eat and drink, 
or I borrowed to buy a car uh, to show off. You know, that is not not that I bought buses to put, uh, you know, to do a business and generate money. You know, it makes a whole lot of difference. So if I borrow to consume, that's not really uh, a good way to use such resources. I will get into trouble. I will likely default, and I will not make money to even borrow less or to stop borrowing at all. You know, it will just be to keep borrowing and borrowing, mortgaging, mortgaging the future uh, of the country. So I think there is need for more discipline. Uh, not right now, we need to get serious and cut down on some uh, expense that I felt is not useful. I do not see reasons why government should be funding pilgrimage or even subsidizing it, irrespective of the religion. You know, so if we used to do it in the past when we have money, that's fine. Right now, we should not be spending on things like that. Let those who can afford it to go and pray wherever they want to pray to their God, you know, be able to go there on their, on, on their own expense, not at the expense of public for. You know, so there are just some things we should behave like a, a country that is broke, that wants to get out of the economic quagmire we found ourselves, and take everything, the body language, the acts, the actions, everything should show it, not uh, statements, not oh, labor calm down, everybody understand. But we keep uh, spending uh, in, a, in, a, in a such an acceptable manner and spending on things that